This is Abe Freetanzer from Awards Radar, and I'm so thrilled to be speaking with Paul W. Downs about hacks. How are you, Paul? I'm great, Abe. How are you? Good, good. It's so nice to be speaking with you again. Yeah, you too. I was uh, going back and uh, looking over our previous interviews just to be like, what did we talk about? Because I realized that the first one was before the show even premiered and uh, with your creative hat. And yeah. that next time was with Meg, um, you know, a few episodes into season two. And so we ne- haven't gotten to talk about all the craziness that actually happened in season two. Oh, my God. So much, so much craziness. Yeah. And we'll assume that anybody watching is aware of that craziness. If not, watch the whole show, then come back and start from this point. Um, how do you feel about uh, things like Jerry Maguire and Entourage? Are they inspirations for you at all? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, well, I don't know. I, I guess the Jerry Maguire is a great reference because that scene was so fun. It was so we just had a blast. Meg and I had such a good time and it was uh, something we looked forward to the whole season. Um, but uh, I don't know. Is there an entourage? I, I'm not actually, I haven't watched Entourage. Oh, don't, okay. be, mad, don't be mad guys. Don't be mad. I, I wasn't, I've seen, I've seen episodes, you know, I know the Jeremy Piven character. I know, you know, I know the gist, but it was before my time. Honestly, it was before my time. So, uh, you know, um, so we didn't draw much on them, but I did like the Jerry Maguire um references you know did you see that as a triumph for jimmy or sort of like an yeah. awkward unfortunate stumbling moment no it's definitely a triumph you know jimmy is um while he's like a member of the industry he's very um renegade in a way he's not like your typical manager he really didn't fit in at latitude which is like so bro and um you know they called him captain planet so he was like even though he has sort of legacy status there, it was not exactly um, a place he totally fit in. Same with Kayla, you know, Meg's character also doesn't totally fit in. And they're a weird, they're such like a weird, odd couple, you know, in that way that they're both kind of, even though they're inside the industry, they're also outside. Um, and, you know, his support of the Deborah Vance character is a manifestation of that. So it was a real, I, I felt like it was a real win for both of them to, to walk out, you know, and to strike out on their own, especially in support of Deborah and Ava, you know. Of course. No, I think it's been good. We've we've gotten sort of more endeared to Jimmy as time goes on because I don't know that it's always been a favorable portrayal, which I'm sure makes him fun as to play as a character also, right? Yeah, you know, Jimmy is so often like the put upon straight man to like, whether it's Deborah having a rant or, you know, Kayla driving him insane, you know? So it was kind of fun to get to also be the character in those scenes in that one. And again, when she's doing the special and the medical emergency happens. Um, so there was some, there were some real moments and we try and do that with all of the characters like show because the ensemble is so strong and every actor has so much range. And we try and like let the DNA of the show, which is like both hard, funny, and also hopefully really heartfelt. Like we try and let everybody have that. And I think, you know, Gene smart obviously is so funny and so believable as a stand up, but also so good at, you know, being uh doing the more dramatic moments and i think that's true of the entire ensemble and so it's really nice when everybody even even meg salter's character in season two got to have some you know more heartfelt stuff which i don't know just makes it makes to me the hard comedy moments even funnier absolutely well on the note of things that are very funny i did enjoy your scenes with ming na wen Uh, i think that was a very uh fun thing what can you say about working with her she is so great and so funny. And, you know, it, you don't see her in comedy a lot. And it's always it's always funny when someone like um, when someone like her comes in and really kills the comedy of it. And it is like, God, it's so nice to do lighthearted stuff, you know, even though she's very intimidating. So uh, the character anyway was like um, pretty badass. But it was just a, it was a blast. She was so fun and so great. And um so supportive of the show and was a fan of the show so we were really really happy that she got to that she worked with us and we got to have her on and this was a great year for comedy guest actresses for hacks you know dominating that emmy category it was crazy i mean we are so lucky that we had so many talented um actors join the show um and yeah it's so funny because we were like they all deserve they all deserve their flowers they all deserve trophies because they were all so good from Harriet Harris to Laurie Metcalf. I mean, 
and you know there's always Jane Adams who's been on both seasons and is going to be in season three again who's so good she is like they're all just otherworldly good and also funny and um unique and yeah we're we're so lucky and it's also nice that Caitlin was uh Caitlin Olson was recognized in that character in that category because she is so so talented and another one who's so good at hard comedy but also so good at more dramatic stuff that um she's just a really talented actor um and so it's really nice that she also got some recognition absolutely i mean they're all terrific and for me jane adams is someone who i think is very underappreciated i watched her on hung yeah. years ago i watched her in sneaky pete all this she's stuff so funny and hung she is so funny and hung it's crazy yeah. I'm going to say that's the uh, around the entourage era. So obviously we're around. You just okay, I was around. <laughs> I was around. Yes, yes, that's true. That's true. No, but they're certainly different. And so as a, you know, someone behind the scenes in this show, are you very involved in storylines that Jimmy has nothing to do with? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we, you know, we, we pitched the show as a show about this character, Deborah Vance, a character study about her, but also about the ecosystem of somebody like her, somebody like, you know, rich and famous and what that entails and all the people that are in her world. And so we really, um, we really like to pitch stories in the writer's room that um, really showcase all the actors that we have in the ensemble and also, um, you know, get to sort of expand the world for Deborah Vance. Absolutely. And I know we've talked in the past and I've talked, you know, with your co-creators about the idea of not punching down. Um, and one of the episodes that I really liked was the accidental <laughs> lesbian cruise, um, which I thought was great because it sort of just more than anything shows how Deborah can implode when she's in a place that she can't control. Yeah. You know, it it was such a funny, I mean, that's a really it was such a fun episode because you have such a journey for Deborah that she goes being like, this isn't my crowd. This is going to be bad to feeling like there's some interest and affection from them and letting the ego, her ego get the best of her. And it was just like, so funny that in the end, you know, her fatal flaw, her vanity is the thing that absolutely ruins it and gets her kicked off. We were like, is this, is this insane that we're, putting her in a dinghy in the middle of the ocean. We're like, no, it's exactly right. It's exactly right. It's one of our favorite episodes. And Ava like is blissfully happy and then is like torn away from this, this dream <laughs> there. I know it's so, it is so sad when she's literally ripped away, but um, yeah, and it was really fun to see her party and have fun. And she, you know, she's another character that it's, it's fun to watch her, you know, get ribbed and, sometimes tortured by Deborah, but to see her have a blast on the cruise was really fun. It was just fun to see them in totally different years, you know? And their lawsuit storyline was also a fun uh, and stressful part of the season. Yes, but you know, it, for someone like Deborah, a lawsuit is love, it's love language. It's her love language. And, um, you know, it was a lesson that in the end, as you, as you know, Ava was almost sad, was dismissed. You know, when it was like, when the suit was dropped, she's kind of heartbroken about it. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned season three before, and I'm curious what you can tell me about it. You said something already, so I'm feeling optimistic. I can say a couple of things. Well, we um, this is out there, so it's, I'm not the first to say it, but we we picked up season two, honestly, like one hour after we ended season one. They they were on a flight, and it was when they landed that we picked it up. This year, there is there has been um, about a year between the time we leave them and the time we see them. So there has been about a year of growth. Um, and it's a moment when Deborah's done this special. And so she has a little bit of relevancy, um, which has its perks and its pitfalls. So, um, and you know, the other thing I can, it's not really a tease because people know that Jimmy and Kayla quit Latitude. They struck out on their own. They are satellite rogue agents now or managers. You know, they are um, trying to keep their head above water in, in the industry. And also, you know, they have a lot to, Deborah keeps them really busy. Deborah keeps them very, very busy. So, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fun, but we are back in Vegas, which is great. Um, Vegas and, and LA and, uh, kind of like season one. And so it's nice to, you know, as, as fun as it was to be on the road, it does feel nice to be back, you know, back at home base kind of. Well, I'm not sure if you also didn't watch the office, but I'm picturing for, yeah. you know, for Jimmy and Kayla, something like a Michael Scott paper company, like operating out of a van type thing. Is that yeah. is that fair? It's it's not far off. I got to say, it's not too far off. 
Awesome. Well, one thing I know we joked about um, a couple of years ago, talking about how Caitlin, you know, was only on shows that run for 17 seasons. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have a sense of how much there is in the tank if, you know, HBO Max is behind it for the show? Yeah, I mean, when we pitched the show, we pitched the series finale, which we always felt like um, would be between four and six seasons, let's say. You know, obviously it depends on um, what we get to do, but we we the, obviously that changes as you make a show and you figure out all the characters and you start writing for specific actors who are then in the parts because season one, we only knew Gene and me, Jimmy, um, were the only people that we knew as we were writing. Um, everyone else we hadn't really worked with before. Um, and so while that can change, I think I think that's still pretty much the plan. Well, I know but that the last... if, we, if we get to 17, I'd, I'd love it. I, I, think it would, I think it would be great. I know that we got a chance to meet in person at the Hollywood Critics Association yeah. Awards. And a fun part of this whole award season thing is seeing like the shows talk to each other. So like the Ted Lasso and Hacks tables were right next to each other. And you could be best friends, you could be mortal enemies, because even though, you know, Ted Lasso is not in the running for the SAG Awards right now, you've been up against each other quite a bit. What is it like to have these, you know, comedy siblings? It's it's actually kind of nice because you get to it's it's almost like we only see each other at those events, but it does feel you're right. It feels like, you know, like when you see family for holidays and you're like, oh, I haven't seen this family member in a while. And it, it's it, you you become you become friendly with them when you're at these things. And it's always it's always fun to celebrate other actors and other shows. And so we all of us really do get along and respect each other's work. And so it's really nice. There's no like, I don't know, especially that cast. They're so nice. Everyone on the cast is so sweet. And it's true of Hacks, too. They're there isn't a bad one in the bunch. Everybody's a really good person, a decent person. That's not like a fun, a fun anecdote probably for an interview, but it's true. Everyone's really, really sweet. And so it, it is nice to to see them. Although you're right. I didn't, I didn't even think about that, that they're not, they're not at SAG this year. We'll miss you, you guys. We'll but you, you do, you do have some fun, friendly competition like Abbott Elementary and the Bear and Limiters. Do you have any favorites from among your, uh, your foes? Oh my god, I can't I can't name favorites. That would be that would be unkind. I can't do that. Um, but no, you know, um there's people on those casts who I have just met through the award circuit, honestly, who are so great. And some people I've known for a long time. So it's you know, it's again, it is like that family reunion vibe, but um, but those are great shows and you know, it it does feel we feel lucky to be, you know, in the same conversation as all of them. Absolutely. Well, I hope it's fun to see them at the next family reunion at the SAG Awards and uh, mm -hmm. looking forward to uh, hearing more about season three soon. Thank you. Yeah, I uh, we're in the middle of it right now, so I'm excited for people to see it. When do you think we might get to do that? Great question. I don't really know. I don't know for sure. We started production a little bit later this year than we have in the past, so it would it would be a little bit later in terms of its airing. But I think it also depends on like what else in terms of programming HBO is putting out when they have the, you know, I think they they kind of plan the premieres to to have their own moment so i don't know awesome. if i knew i probably couldn't say but i don't actually know all right well thank you for speculating it's great to talk about all this with you and uh pleasure to see you again you too i hope i see you in person at one of these shows soon that would be great